This is Jason Metal Conjure here with the Jean Francais Dagonais. That's your name. That's your name. Close. Ah, I almost had it. Almost. <laughs> oh, just uh, thank you for your time. And um, funny, last year in August was like the first step with DSI, internal bleeding and cataclysm. It was like the first death metal show since the pandemic, I felt, you know, for for the, for California. Yeah. And it was a big show in L.A. And a year later, about a year, it's with DSI again. So tell me, what was it like coming back after, you know, just everything, the chaos in the world? And now a year later. I mean, it was crazy because you know we booked the store and none of us actually I think none of us really believed that it would happen we were just like I like fingers crossed knocking on wood like praying to the gods like please yeah <laughs> we were hoping that something happens and then uh, Mauricio called me he's like okay it's happening we're we're doing it we're like fuck yeah I'm so happy to get out of my house because I mean the pandemic was scary at first for, for us and for me but then I started all, having all these studio gigs and I, I just worked my ass off the whole time. Most bands, instead of touring, decided to work on music and work on some records. And, and I, I, I did so many things within that that time. So I, I didn't really, it went kind of fast for me, uh, more than some others, but uh, I, I was so happy to go back out on the road. And when that happened and then to see so many people supporting the tour and buying merch and like going crazy at the shows and it, all, it, it gave us a, a huge drive to, to keep going and uh, we, we we made like we got really good friends with the DSI guys Great. and they were like man let's do another tour because it was so much fun so so we plotted this one and then now that's happening and that's doing well and very happy to be back with those guys. I'm happy to hear it. And um, a special occasion, uh, Deicide's playing all of the their 1992 album, The Le yeah. Legion. Uh, other way, you guys are performing from Serenity and Fire from 2004. Now, the dates don't, it's like 30 years from yeah, that. Yeah. So what um, came to do this album live? What was the, uh, how did this come about? Well, we were talking about doing a tour that would be different because we already toured together. So we're like, let's do something special. You know, a funny story, the first time we, the, first, the very first tour we ever did in our lives as Cataclysm was with DSI. And it was on the Legion album in 1994, I believe, or 95. Sorcery, right around yeah. there, coming yeah, out almost. We were, we, we were on Sorcery, and we did that tour. And so now we're so happy to, to, to be part of the Legion again so so many years later. It's because we were looking at, at our records, and we were like, I think Serenity is the one that makes more sense to play from top to finish. We were thinking either that one or Shadows and Dust. Wow. And uh, we voted as a band, like, uh, which one? Because I, I personally, I love both, so I, I, I didn't really mind playing it yeah. either or. And we thought Sorcery is a bit too old. To, to, and it's fast, have, though. Yeah, <laughs> it's fast. It's cool songs. Uh, but we don't have Sylvain as a singer. So I, it defeats the purpose. I, I think if we, if we were to do that, we would have to somehow include them. And, and like, I, I, like, I would do it like that. But... I think I think for us the obvious choice was Shadows and Dust or, or Serenity because these were the albums that put us on the map. Right. I think after the early early days, and uh, yeah, we voted for Serenity. That's what happened. And but it, I, I'm happy because it, it, it's very fluid and uh, all songs are like back to back. And there's grooves, there's fast stuff, there's like the melodies there. Everything's there. So. You mentioned that, um, like, with sorcery and temple of knowledge, like, I felt that was one era of cataclysm, yeah. and then victims came in in the prophecy, and then you have, like, you know, from In the Arms of Devastation, and with the new albums, from Epic, Shadows, and Serenity, I felt those three albums were its very own era, yeah, and yeah. personally, as a fan, I think, for me, that's your, I think that's the, your, the best, most represented era, Serenity and Fire, for me, being one of yeah. the strongest material, there's, like, this rawness that, like, with, like, kind of with um, Christian's Ageless Venomous, where the production is like, it's clean, but it's still gritty. Yeah. You can still hear it with some of the songs, like as I slid it with the down picking intro, and then just, you know, the ambassador, like, talk, talk to me about the, what was special about making that album with your melodic groove style? Well, we, you know, one thing that was kind of cool about those albums is that uh, the recording technology was kind of starting to be developing with, with Pro Tools and the digital stuff, but we were still kind of tracking the tape. It was kind of in between like the, 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 the like what it is today and, and what it was back in the early days. And I think that hybrid of sound made it 
really special for those years, like the equipment that was available in the studios and all that, and also the who we were as a band at the, the age we were then. It's kind of like it's it's um, it's kind of like a piece of our musical journey, and uh, I'm very proud of what we accomplished at, 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 at that moment in time, and I think. Uh, all these factors, like the the way we got along together as a band, and we were finding ourselves, like like I said, the sound and the technology that was around the early 2000s, made all of these albums special. And it's kind of like sometimes when you keep going, you don't really realize, uh, like 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 it's a journey. So you kind of keep going with the flow, and you try, you keep trying new things, and and, and trying to push yourself. As far as you can as you can go musically, and then once in a while you look back and you're like, oh wow, these, these were actually really cool albums. <laughs> and um, we're so spoiled in our music with like drummers and like you know the the hyperblast, the northern hyperblast, you know, with you and suffocation and the napalm death early, you know, but you know making extreme drumming, you know, very prominent that we can hear in almost every band. Yeah. There's been so many drummers in 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 your. Um, for the for cataclysm and I think it was Martin um, Marais, uh, Mar yeah, yeah. um was the drummer for and with hearing like blowing the swans and hearing the chorus and for all our yes. sins the the hyperblast felt more like either recognizable it just felt different than even the other times because the downbeat for you know for like uh, stigmata was just very da -da 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 -da, yeah, like yeah, that yeah. it was fast but the this time it just felt it was taken on another level what was the um, the drumming like making either drum beats and uh, drum ideas with him together what was that like at that time period because like i said those intros and parts that's the like the best drumming i can ever hear remember from the band yeah i mean martin was like one of his strength he wasn't he was not really a technical drummer but he, he was like what i call a powerful drummer so every beat that he designed for the songs were very simplistic but very like in your face it's like a punch in your face and, and i i thought it, like I, it kind of made me write in a certain way because i i was most of the times me and them at the practice spot and we put the songs together and his drumming made make it made me write these riffs that would that became serenity fire and i think it's made the whole album super powerful and and and, and punchy without being too over the top complicated and I think that, was, that that made it special in itself. And his drumming was, for for the time, was already over the top with what was going on back then. Right. So, so in, like everybody, like I remember when the album came out, nobody believed there was a drummer. They were like, "Ah, oh, you guys play with a drum machine." And and we went live and we played all the the stuff, and everyone just job yeah. just dropped. They were like, "Oh yeah, that's 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 real." But I that's. But then, like, I mean, music keeps evolving and, and all that, and there's better, younger drummers that comes along, and, and things keep pushing forward. But that's the cool thing about music. It's just everything keeps pushing and pushing, and, and you try your best to, to deliver the best music as you can. And, and we're, we're not getting any younger. We're all, we're all in, in our, our mid-40s, going, going towards our 50s, and, and we still love what we do, and we still try to push ourselves as far as we can. But of course, whatever we do now, it's not probably going to be the same mind frame as when we were 25. That's obvious, but we still try our best. We, we give it all we have, and, and we, we try to push these albums. And so far, it's been good. Like uh, I mean, our, our last few records, we, we toured a lot on them, and the fans are, are there and they support. And uh, we're going to keep going and see see where the next one leads. That's the next thing we do after this. These tours, we're going back to the. The drawing board and start writing some songs and this tour is also inspir inspirational for that and we're gonna maybe revisit some of the stuff we did in the past and mix it up with some of the more modern stuff that we're doing now and come up with some hybrid new album that's coming to see come along i talked to uh, todd of the basis of psychroptic a few years ago yeah. about it's so hard to make a set list because when the new album comes out you have to play from the new album which i like when bands play yeah. from the new album i personally do but then so many songs get forgotten i don't know if it's a band choice i don't know if it's a preference but i wish there was a better way to you know have a lot of the discography or just even just change it up like constantly yeah. like that challenge through 14 albums you know right about give or take right yeah. so what's the best way go like you know doing this whole album well, what's it going what's it gonna be like you know the challenge of doing that in the future 
I mean, hopefully, hopefully we can do maybe a little more of that, of that like in between the promotion things for the new stuff. Because you always, if you put a new album out, you have to promote it, and that's the goal is to kind of sell the new album and right. make, make sure that people get to hear it and to enjoy the new tracks. But whenever you have a chance to do special tours like that, I think it's great. Like, and I, I like it personally. I, I, I remember seeing Iron Maiden when they only played the first four albums. Uh, they did that tour like maybe ten years ago. Yeah, I remember. And, and yeah, I was so I, so stoked to see that because I. I was I mean, an early Maiden fan, and I, I went to a couple of the shows, and I was really happy to to see a band do that. And for us, it's great because a lot of people are coming to see this now. They either were listening to Serenity and Fire when they were young, or they didn't have the chance to see it because they, they didn't even know us. It was my last year in high school when that album came out. <laughs> Yeah, so like a lot of the people, our, our generation are coming back. Yeah. And then the new guys that like the new stuff, they're like, man, we get a chance to see the old stuff. And then they, they're happy as well. So it's a it's a win-win, I think. I'd say, too, uh, one uh, thing about uh, Serenity and Fire, For All Our Sins, is probably, I think, the best Cataclysm song. Not because not only because it changes so much at the end, yeah. there's just very, you know, done that melody at the end, but Peter's vocals, I yeah, mean, yeah. just the best scream high vocals in, I think, ever. Tell me, um, how did that come to be for him to do, like do guest vocals? How was that? What was that like? Just hearing him and just him being part of that process of the song. Well, in those years, we toured a lot with the Parkersy and then Cannibal Corpse and a lot of bands. That we ended up doing like so many tours together, and uh, we, we became friends. And uh, we were working on the Sydney or anything Fire record in, in Montreal, and they were touring, supporting Demo Borgir, I believe, in the U.S. Well, those with Children of Bottom and Nevermore, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and um, we, we I, I called Peter and I says, if you want to do a guest vocal thing on our record, I'll, I'll come pick you up at the show, and uh, if you want to pass by the studio and, and check it out, I was like, ah, hell yeah, like, yeah I'll, I'll do it for sure. And uh, we came by, we, we smoked some weed, and then we did this thing, and we're all like, yes! <laughs> How long did it take? How long was the whole process? Oh, an hour. Maybe. Wow, <laughs> that's pretty because cool. Because we knew, we knew like the chorus. We knew how we wanted to hear it, and then we told Peter because we love what he does. It's, it's big, like it's the best. And uh, we, we we asked him, can you do one of those on the on, on the part? It was like fuck yeah. <laughs> He, he, they just played um, earlier this year, Hypocrisy. His vocals, exactly the same. Yeah. It's He's in, he's not human. And in the most compliment, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, last question. Thank you for your time. Uh, about, I think it was maybe a year ago, the band said that that there would be not a hiatus, but they, the touring wouldn't be, there was like be some kind of break. Yeah. Is that still going to be kind of going forward? Well, or is with everything going, is things changing? It's a funny thing because, you know, we're all getting older. We all have families. And we're like, man, we, we still love doing this. We don't want to give it up, but at the same time, like it gets harder to leave, like for a certain amount of time, and uh, that's the reason why we're like, okay, we want to take things a little a bit more slower and, and take it easy. But we've been saying this, and we keep getting those huge offers where we're like, like those type of offers that you can't say no, right? And they keep coming because because. Maybe we start saying that we're, we want, don't want to tour as much, so people are like, oh, no, let's, let's book the band. I, I don't know exactly why all of this is happening. Better late now. than never, right? Well, so it seems like we're getting all this hype that's kind of pushing us forward, and we're, we keep getting those those offers that are really hard to refuse with, like, high-level touring with high-level bands with high-level uh, budgets and all that, and we're like... And... Uh, then we're saying, what we said is like every offer, let's let's sit down, and look at it. Right. Everybody's in. Let's go for it. If we want to take like a few months off, take a few months off, then we see what, what what's after and we we'll keep going. Because that could be good for your families later on with yeah. those big things. You're keeping them in mind. Yeah. Let them know this opportunity will come faster to someday. Exactly. Right. And the thing sometimes, like I know also too well in this business. If you say no to something, it doesn't doesn't necessarily come back later. Right. And we, we did some of these things that we should have probably said yes to in the past and we didn't. And maybe the band would be at a different place if we, if we did, but it's, it's just life. But I think we're getting wiser as we age, so we're like, okay, get, get these up on the table. And we have like this album that we have, we're almost ready to record and we're like, 
eh, okay, let's give it another year and, and push all of that and see where it leads, and then we'll, we'll take it as it as it comes. Like if the offer makes sense and everybody wants to do it, we say yes. Somebody doesn't want to because this and that, then we'll take a break and stay home a few more months. And, and okay. Hopefully. I think I think it's the best way to approach things at, at this point. It, yeah, I can tell from your energy that it sounds like you guys are really like really considering all these options. So I'm really happy to hear it from you guys. And better late than never for one of the OG bands, especially from Canada, to finally get their due. If you know what I mean? It took a lot and just for change, but I'm really happy to hear that. Again, so thank you so much for your time. Is there anything you'd like to say? Uh, last words for to tonight and the rest of the show in support of. Uh, Probably for me, one of the best albums you guys have in Serenity and Fire. Thank you so much. I mean, just a big cheers to everybody that's been supporting us for all those years, and and the new generation of fans that just joined us a few albums ago. It's it's been just an incredible ride, and we are as people and as a band, we always gonna do our best and push things as far as we can. And if sometimes we decide to take a break, please understand that's just how it is and if not we're, we're gonna give 200 percent in whatever we choose to do and moving forward so that's that's the, the that's how we're gonna approach things and uh, by no means the band's gonna break up or do anything like that we're i think we're in it for another good 10 15 more years wow. but we'll take it as it comes hyper blasting will never go away <laughs> cool thank you so much for your time